started here. Um, this morning we had Marianne Points. Points. <laughs> just told me. And Gretchen McLean. Uh, Marianne is a middle school teacher at Senate Middle School here in Madison. And Gretchen is a high school English teacher at DeForest High School. They were both part of the Greater Madison Writing Project this summer. And we'll be presenting on multi-genre projects. Um, I teach pre-standard, required kind of classes, senior comp and lit, um, college, college readiness class. I've always done kind of standard research, and I really kind of love doing that. The whole MLA format, here I have a, I have a sheet that I hand out there, 17 handy steps to writing a research paper, including note cards and all of that. And so thinking about multi-genre projects, um, for me, is making that leap from standard traditional even in a way that I love it too, a more untraditional, but also useful to them as they go beyond kind of ways. And um, so, and I'm, I'm beating one over here, but I still need to know things like how are they setting their sources and all that. And so that's part of what I'm blending in my mind, at least between the non-standard, um, you know, multi-genre and, and what they need for their futures, I guess. And I'm just going to start by saying that Gretchen and I are very comfortable taking questions as we go today, so if there's anything you want to know, just let us know as we're going. Um, as Mark said, I'm Marianne Boyce, and I am a special education teacher at Senate Middle School in Madison. Um, I've been co-teaching language arts my whole time there, and at Senate, we have kind of a unique setup. Um, we do all of our own curriculum, so teachers run the we're a multi-age middle school, so we have six, seventh, and eighth graders in class together, and kids stay with the same teachers for all three years, so you just get a new group of sixth graders every year. And so it's a little different structure-wise compared to most middle schools. Um, Gretchen and I met this summer, as Mark said, as part of the Greater Madison Writing Project, and we just want to do a little advertisement for the writing project because I think it's a really great thing. Um, part of the focus of the project is that teachers are at the center, which is kind of key to the whole project. Yeah, and especially I think we're, you know, I don't know about you guys, but it sort of seems like we're the last people that get asked when it comes to, you know, making curriculum changes or, um, you know, what we want to do in our classrooms. And so it just was, it was a really empowering, growing experience. Um, I've heard people talk about, you know, presenters in town Romano, you know, teachers doing the work that we're asking our students to do. And it just was a real opportunity to be a writer amongst teachers. Um, and I would recommend that for anyone. It, you may feel a little daunted. It's about four weeks in July, um, so about seven hours. And but it's you know the best month you could spend, I think, doing that. And you can apply to, to do that or see that there's a GMWP website um, that you can go to and find out more about that. I think Gretchen and I, as well as everyone I think that was in the Summer Institute with us this summer would say it was probably the best professional development experience we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and it's professional development both in like personal professional development as a writer myself and as, also as a teacher of writing. And Mark, the guy who introduced us right back over there, is the director of the project. So if you're at all interested in knowing more, he's a good person to talk to after our presentation. Does it know what Calum's Yes, and actually the director of Oshkosh? Oshkosh. 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 And Milwaukee is too. They can probably answer your questions. Well, well, and because of that, it's a part of the National Writing Project. So that's kind of how the National Writing Project spreads itself around the country. So there are several all over. I think Wisconsin's a pretty, um, I don't know. I mean, it does have several across the states. And all right, so we have we're going to start by doing a little writing ourselves, and we want you to think about why you came to this session, the session group today, what brought you here, what you hope to get out of this session. Um, so just take about a minute. Does you anybody write on any paper? That scrap paper you have, or on whatever you want. You know, we're not collecting this, but just take a minute and write down why you're here. This is how I began the writing project every day is when you haven't written it, so that's how I'm going to start with you. If anybody needs paper. Um,
that's not too heavy. Um, we are going to use a protocol from the book Joyful Learning um, by Alice Barnes, Solman, and Paul Proust as uh, activity to kind of share out a little bit. And so what everyone needs to do is stand up. <laughs> A little bit more activated, we'll warm up since it's so cold here. Um, and this activity is known both as stand and deliver or as novel ideas only. And what's going to happen is you're going to look at the reasons why you're here. And whoever wants to start us off will just say one of their reasons. If your reason is said, you sit down. So we're only sharing new ideas. So we're not going to repeat any ideas. So is there somebody who wants to start us off? Thank you. Um, looking to incorporate a multi donor project as the final project for my class creative writing. So let's sit down. Yes. <laughs> we can just pop for a minute. Next year, uh, the seventh graders are going to be doing a long term research project in English, science, and social studies. So we're looking for ideas on how other people have approached that. <laughs> looking for ways to transition from high school into university and make that research meaningful. Curious about the writing project? I some of my life is I'm simply looking for new and interesting things. Yeah. Mine's really similar. I'd like to transform the standard type writing projects into a unique and creative opportunity. I teach composition theory to teachers who are going to be going to student teaching, so I wanted to be able to better represent what you guys are doing to that. I just want to do less things. I would like to expand the multi genre approach interdisciplinary with history. So we're doing a project together. Okay. So I'm guessing that we've all kind of experienced the same kind of frustrations that Gretchen and I have experienced, but there's a number of things that kind of led us in this direction. I just found that I, I would get students who would try really hard at their research papers. I'm in a pretty good direction giver. Like I said, I have my 17 handy steps to writing a research paper, and that's a nice tool when you can get kids to, you know, okay, I need to do my note cards. Where are you at on this list? But I found that um, what was frustrating for me is getting, getting them to use the source correctly, citing it correctly, um, integrating the source even, but having nothing to say about it. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, at least nothing that was relevant. I mean, they, they could follow the directions, but they couldn't get outside the box. So um, that, that was one of the reasons I started like, trying to open that door a little bit um, to you know, allow them to do other kinds of, of using their sources for other things. And when I started, we did like five week research unit and students were working on the same topic, the same paper for five weeks. And by week two, they were all bored. <laughs> we was writing all this down. Nobody was engaged. The papers were really boring to read. Um, and so I was just looking for something to bring it back. Um, and so we both were kind of asking like, how can we structure research in a way that gives students both choice and voice? Um, and in doing some research, um, I, I was asking this question a few years ago um, while I was in a, grad, a graduate school program, and my instructor directed me towards Tom Romano, and I started reading some of his stuff and doing some other research, and um, became really intrigued by the idea of multi-genre research and how um, it's going to connect students to more writing that they're going to be typically doing other than a you know, standard five paragraph essay. And Gretchen came at it a little newer than I did um, um, recently. Do you want to? Do they want to look at the examples here? I think we're going to show those. Ones. Okay. Um, I have done multi. It turns out I've done multi research, multi genre research projects. I just didn't really know that I was doing that. Um, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I also do the traditional. But. Um, so in, in coming to multi-genre, I got a bunch of different books. I got some of the San Romano books. I also found, um, being a middle school teacher, um, a book called The Multi-Genre Research Paper by Camille Allen that's geared towards grades four through six. So if you're working with younger students, that book was a really helpful thing for me to explore as well in looking at what students can do. Um, 
For me, the research process starts very much like a tr more traditional research process. Students are selecting a topic, collecting information. Once they have that stuff is where it kind of changes. And if you look in your packet, on the second page, I have a, an assignment guide that I used for doing multi-data research. Um, as I'm in a kind of a non-traditional setting with six, seven, eighth graders, we, we did have different expectations based on grade level, so we could kind of differentiate the project for students. And I did really stress with students that you needed to have a variety of genres, and so you couldn't write all really short poems, but you had, could have some short, shorter genres some longer genres and some more alternative or artistic genres so that they can play with it a little bit. Um, and they also had a lot of freedom of choice in their topic. And so feel free if you are doing a project to take this and change it, modify it to however you want to change it. Um, on the second page, Gretchen and I have created just a long list of possible genres. Um, and I was just thinking keep it on the page because there's there's more. I mean, there the sky's the limit. On, on what kind of genres, and this could be kind of a student choice too, as they're making up their own. Yeah, there's there's a lot of possibilities. Um, and so, one of the things I did once we had kind of started to gather information is I would conduct mini lessons on different genres to expose students to different genres. And so, sometimes I would use something a student had created, like I had a student create a dialogue on her own. Great. So then we use that to model with other students how to do a dialogue as a genre. Sometimes I just come up with different ideas and introduce them, but I try throughout our time to teach a lot of different genres and mini lessons so they can have a variety of ideas that they can choose from. And then one of the things I think is most important about conducting multi-genre research is thinking about why students are choosing the genre they're choosing and a way of showing us where they're getting the and I've been very open with my students about adding some fictional information if they want to create a birth certificate but they can't find the name of the hospital where the person is born. It's okay to create a name of the hospital, but I want them to document that they did that. And so at the end of every piece, I ask the students to create an end note. Some students create that on a separate sheet of paper and if they have their end notes for each piece on a separate sheet, other students put an end note at the end of each piece and so it's right there on the page with each piece. But I think it's really important for them to kind of think about why I chose that. That possibilities are so endless. I feel like you know you can have Abraham Lincoln's death being told through his obituary, being told through a wanted poster for John Wilkes Booth, being told through the voice of somebody who witnessed it at the theater. There's so many endless possibilities for students to choose perspective and to choose what to write. But I think it's important for them to kind of be able to reflect back and share that information. And I think for, well, just like the end note, I think that's really important too for people like me who are like gonna wanna know what their citation is. You know, um, where did you get that information or did you make it up and why did you do what you did? And I found that students really need some, some room to be able to figure out what analyze means. I mean, I, I sort of think we kind of get that, but in the process of figuring things out, students are still, I mean, I'm seniors, and so many of them, what do you want, what do you, what do you want me to say? What do you, what do you expect? And I just thought, I want you to think and they just kind of buckle at that. But I think that sort of end note might free them up a little bit to, to be willing to offer some explanations that are theirs instead of what they're doing. What do you want, what do you want to hear? Uh, and then I wanted to share some of my students' work with you. So at the end of your packet, I do have some genre examples with complete with end notes taken directly from student work. Um, some of them are sixth graders, some of them are seventh graders, and some of them are eighth graders, um, and they have a variety of topics. I also brought in some examples, and I have quite a few, so I'm just going to kind of cast them out, and if you want to just cast them around and take a look at them. Um, some of them I have multiple copies of, so I'll try to get different copies to different rows. I'm going to pass some of them
your project and a lot of times students come up with a creative way of packaging it for storage purposes a lot of the packages I have not kept over time um, there's a few that are like in binders but I've had students create um, boxes or kind of quite a variety of different ways for packaging their genres and some students struggle a lot with the package other students are able to come up with things that fit their topic really easily but part of part of making it a whole is coming up with some sort of way connected to a package. Reflective global learners go crazy. They ask me 20 times, what are we supposed to do? 
I don't get it. Where am I going? You know, and so I, and I'll just tell them, pick a theme, pick a theme, and then pick the big picture you're shooting for, and then and then go with that. And you usually can produce something pretty good. Um, like I said, I haven't read a lot of these, and I think as the perks of being a wallflower, um, centos get passed around, you guys will recognize the lines from some of the songs, Blackbird, um, you know, um, Somebody, Something, uh, some more Beatles songs are on there, but perhaps those will pop out at you. And what I noticed about their analysis of it is the kids really appreciated being able to take ownership of that, a little more ease of writing a poem, something they were maybe uncomfortable with before. Um, and so, like I said, this is these are fresh off the press, and I'm not quite sure what all of them say, but I did read a few of them, and, and um, um, some of those kinds of things caught my eye with that. Just, I was just wondering what class is that that you This is senior comp and lit. It's the um, you know, kind of the more college preppedness of it. I haven't done anything like this with sophomores, but I think it might work for some things. Uh, I think that the key is to have a text that invites other texts brought in. Like this is pretty illusion heavy. Um, the one I do with Prince of the or the things they carried is a little bit different and I'll talk about that in a sense. Did you have a question? Uh, I just had a comment that I have done this central poetry with middle schoolers and it does work and we focused it more on a theme not from a text that referenced others but they do take huge ownership of it and, and it also provides a structure where students ha don't have to be good at writing poetry because they're not using their own words and so it's a great scaffold as well. And I think so part of what we're talking about is using all the genre to conduct a research project, but we also think it can really be applied to a lot of other aspects, and Gretchen's done a lot with it in terms of like novel study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just, again, that's kind of makes poetry a little, a little more safe to approach it, and the stuff that they love can be brought in to, to make something else. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll talk about the center that I do with the, the things they carry, and I'll pass some of these around too and kind of show you some of the variety. And we use the book, The Things They Carried, um, and we also use the movie, Dear America, Letters Home from Vietnam. Um, and just, if you've ever, and there's a book of that, so all those letters are collected in a book. I've spent years rapidly, you know, writing down some of the quotes as those guys read those. Um, but this, this just kind of shows you a, a variety of, um, like some of the kids, I just have them do one line has to be from the book, and then, um, so this, this young woman liked music better than she liked war, and so that's reflected in this. And there's a good soundtrack that goes with uh, Dear America as well. Um, this is just, you know, so it doesn't, it, it affords them some room to be creative, but also, um, you know, to kind of stick to the format as well. And so I'll pass those around too. And I, at first I felt sort of bad about, you know, the fact that I was telling, you know, like I put these up in the hallway, and te other teachers would say, oh, did those kids write those poems? And they were kind of blown away by it. And, and I always like kind of apologize. Well, kind of. You know, and I've stopped doing that. It's like, yeah, these guys wrote these poems. Um, and that's what synthesis is, taking things that are, that are separate and then making something new from that. And I am going to spend a little more time this year when we do the things that carried one with the analysis of that um, to find out a little more about that. I think with that, the end note was one strategy for kind of having students reflect back on why they're making decisions in their writing and the process they went through. Another technique for doing that is what we're calling a process paper. Um, and that's just like a reflection of the process you went through as you completed the writing assignment, writing about what was going on in your head, conversations you might have had with others, what you wrote, your thoughts about how you revised. But kind of putting it all together. And if you looked at Gretchen's examples that she has a great P at the ones that we first passed out, you can see that the students had a process paper component in that as well where they were reflecting back. We've pulled a couple comments from what they've said. Um, just to kind of share what was going through through their heads as they were writing. And I don't know if everybody can see, so I'll read this one out loud. Knowing that I made this poem really makes me feel super awesome. When I'm writing normal poems, I feel kind of dumb sometimes because I don't know ever what to write. But I honestly love this activity because I could have an idea and create it right there. I don't know. I this one. Once I was putting the lines of the songs in the book in order, I started getting into a groove and I felt like it sounded really good. It means a lot more now that it's original. 
That's just because I put work into it and made it. But there's a couple of them that I read. It's like they started out with one idea and grooved into another idea. So I kind of like that. How, how long do you? I know you said like the, the, you give them like they have prep time and then you spend that day where they can just put everything together. And yeah, I had the DJ day and on that day they make the rough draft and then they, they went another day in the lab and they made the, the posters. Okay. And um, well, I wasn't gone and I was gone in the lab day. I was really sad about that because I'm able to walk around and sort of emphasize that readability is key. And so some of them, they got really dark at the bottom and, and it was hard to read them. And so just reminding students that you got to keep in mind your audience, you got to, you know, and that's with the, with the Vietnam ones also, you know, I'm able to coach them a little bit along and say, it's, it's got to be readable, guys. That's, that's, you know, and they're still, you know, into thinking about they want all the points they can get. And so, you know, they're, they're pretty cooperative with it as, far, as far as that. And that's the other mistake that I made early on is not really giving them a line limit. And so they'll pick every line they love and just put them on there. And, and, it's, and it's just not that fun to read, like an 11 by 17 sheet of paper with small text over you know, a, dark, a dark thing and it, without any sense of um, you know, rhythm to it. And they really do a better job if they have to make it a little more succinct. Um, and then another thing that I've done is they're all still the assignment sheet. And it turns out, I mean, I'm kind of excited about this. Um, sorry. And that I, um, I've been doing multi-gender projects, yay. I didn't even know. Um, it's, uh, I did it actually as a final. I have them do a read for pleasure unit or all, all year. They get to read for pleasure, pick their books, they talk to me about it. But I haven't had to pick one of those. I, I don't know if you guys, some of you have seniors, some of you don't, but doing a final for seniors is sometimes um, in, in making it quality. So I had them pick their favorite book from RFP and they had to rewrite the book in the form of a poem, create some kind of visual, have a little biography of the author on it. Um, and so I just picked a couple of the of some of the good ones that survived um, the, the pile. And speaking of Marilyn Monroe, but um, this is who drew this in class. And I, you know, I'm always hoping nobody steals it when I bring it out in public. But um, and he just, you know, he just decided I was, and it really gives kids kind of an opportunity to do other things that they're good at. Um, versus just the, the things they've, they've been assigned that they might, they might not click with them. And then um, just two others. Again, just kind of showing the multi-genre. So again, in packaging, you, you certainly could have options. And I didn't feel like this wasn't challenging for seniors at all. But again, after we'd spent the whole year doing research papers, doing, you know, lit analysis, doing, you know, a, a pretty intense poetry unit, I, I, I didn't feel like, um, you know, we also have to think about what we're left with at the end of the year to grade, you know, two days later. So, this was, oh. For this project, what did you, what do they have? I guess what are the, um, it's in, what's about their poem? Yep, it's a celebrate reading. And again, those are just kind of my directions. Anything that you want electronically, just send me an email. Can I take a picture, please? Oh, yeah. into the part of the presentation where you get a chance to play a little bit and since we don't really have time for everyone to like dig in and research a topic we selected some books that we hope you're familiar with at least one of them uh, so we have the outsiders the hunger games romeo and juliet to kill mockingbird and the things they carry so what we'd like you to do is pick one of those books and if you really aren't super familiar with any of those books you can pick a book of your own choosing we have a big crate over here full of sorry a variety of supplies, color paper, chalk, markers, scissors, glue sticks. Uh, Thank you. And we're going to give you a little bit of time to create some sort of short, artistic, fun genre. Um, Gretchen and I both made some examples, so I'll kind of share an example. Uh, I took the book Wonder, which if you're not familiar with it, it's more of like a fifth, sixth grade book that's fabulous. I highly recommend it to anyone who has it read it. It was probably the best book I read last year. Um, in the book, um, it's about a young man with a severe facial deformity. He's never attended public school. So in fifth grade, it's his first year going into school. And he, um, in the book, makes a decision to invite his whole class to his birthday party and only five students come. So it's kind of like a very emotional point for him in terms of him trying to figure out how to fit in the way some students are treating him or the things that are happening in his that. And so I chose to make his birthday party invitation as a genre for, for that book. And Gretchen. And then what I do, there's a nice little book about um, the teachings of Tim O'Brien. It's an NCTE book. 
And there's an assignment in there where he talks about um, uh, earn your abstracts, earn your abstractions. And so in chapter one of the things they carry, um, he, he has all these lists of, of things that are real concrete. And I start by giving him first a poem by um, Susan Paul Schultz, no offense to her. Um, but, and I say, okay, highlight the abstracts. And they just like highlight the whole thing. And then, the <laughs> and then I have them, you know, look at that and, and say, you know, when we talk about the list of, you know, the radio weight, 11 pounds, and, um, and then even when you get to the abstract, it's kind of a more powerful thing. So I have them write down, you know, brainstorm what are the things you carry, and then uh, finish it up with an abstract. And so that's, I tried to write a poem that um, kind of followed those, those lines. So we're going to give you all about five, six minutes to grab what materials you want, think about those books or another book you're choosing, and create some sort of genre project, some sort of genre piece. It's not going to be a project, just one piece that connects it. A letter, a want ad, a recipe, a, an invitation, an obituary. Does anybody want to? Yes, come grab materials. We, it's not, we can't really pass it off very easily. We have a lot of stuff in here. We have a book. I have some of I do think that it's important, like, what are you going to do with it? You know, it's like yeah. that, or maybe, or maybe that 
that's just because I'm more comfortable like coming up with things like an action, you know, but it gives them that, that action to come from the thoughts that it's yeah. supposed to. It's like, I mean, in a way, it's not like the whole senior should be done with polls or finance like that. I mean, I think there, I did, I think with 1984, I did like a, you know, yeah, it's like they actually took an element of 1984 and they find out like the real world. There's so one guy just to pick North Korea. And he just like, was like, oh my gosh, they have more talks that are, they're trying, I mean, he was like finding buildings and everything. Because in a way, it seems to be a fetish. Yeah. I think, yeah. 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 Yeah.
sharing that piece in this style and choose six words to describe one part of that experience for yourself. Okay, it might be like how you felt going through it, it might be like how you're going to use it. Did this add to your learning or your experience with the, with the original piece? And you don't have to give exactly six words, but only all the six words. And we're just going to do a quick, we'll give you a minute to think of your words, but then we're going to just whip around the room and let everybody share their words. Okay. What's the problem again? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. What was this experience like for you? In other words, creating a multi-genre piece from something that you're familiar with. How did that add to your learning? How did that, um, you know, how, how can you make it something that you bring back to your kids? And so what will your expectations kind of be of them? Just how are you feeling analysis. about it? Yeah, yeah. And it's up to six words. Just be one word. Do you have to understand that? Ready? Yes. We're ready. I put um, surprised. I forgot sketching is fun. Inspired <laughs> so to steal all your ideas. Yay. <laughs> uh, Kathleen? Maybe? Oh, okay. Um, highlighted favorite character, fireflies, solid Thought too much. <laughs> Rush. Focus work. <laughs> Reflective, dig deeper, reread, and Good. Excellent. Sento, song, goal, not intimidating. Good. Inspiring, limitless, abstract, innovative, and creative juices. Very good. I'll do this. It's all right. I think this is one of those things that they, the, the bar raises as the, as the experience is being for, you know? Frightening. <laughs> <laughs> and then challenging and then fun. Good. Uh, breath and interactive first person personalized. Good. Good Perspective, focus, positive, energized, connected. Good. Put thought outside of structure. Good. I said connected to expand ideas. Good. Collaborative. Good. Eye-opening, fun, and uh, first-person. Good to be my students. Re-energized. Yay. Okay. All right. So um, just to share a little bit with you about my students, the first time I conducted this with students as part of a classroom action research project, and so I did a lot of students surveying as we went along to see if it really was making a difference in their engagement. And this is some of the feedback I got back from students at the end of the process. Um, I did not like research before this year. I think you should keep doing this because it's fun and helps you learn more about research. I liked all of it. The research project was the best thing we did in class. And the way we did the research helped me a lot. I could understand the information in different ways. Everything was very interesting to me. And so through that process, it really helped me see that students were able to connect a lot more into their work. And we want to end with a write out. We have exactly 60 seconds left. So if you just want to reflect on the last 50 minutes and think about what can you take from today and use in your classroom. Thank you.